And let's say hello to Katie Hopkins here in studio. Thank you, Katie, for joining us here on The Spin Room today. Thank you very much for having me. And also happy to be joined by former Israeli ambassador to France and a regular on The Spin Room, Daniel Sheck. Daniel, great to have you on the show again. Thanks Always a lot. Always happy to be here. Katie, what is the main claim in your film, that people are actually leaving Europe because of this? Yes, Homelands is a documentary that I'm really proud of, and it documents the story of Jewish families, just regular mums and dads, in mostly in central Paris, that are forced to leave Paris because of the Islamist threat. Mm -hmm. So Jewish families in Paris right now are being targeted by Islamists. Mm -hmm. 18 families receive letters to their homes telling them they will be killed if they don't get out. And mm -hmm. I've spoken to many families who are tired of being called dirty, Jew in the street or their children told to take off their various bits. But of you talk about an exodus in all of Western Europe, aren't you? Not, not only just France. No, not just not just Paris at all. Just this Paris. is happening across Western Europe. What are the numbers? What well, we've just had an increase of 73%, the attacks on Jews right now in Paris. But the Paris. numbers of people leaving? And if you, 8,000 last year left Paris for Israel, and mm -hmm. that number is set to rise exponentially. And in Germany, Jewish individuals have just been warned not to wear their kippah when they're out for fear of attack. That's right. the reality of what we face. Uh, Daniel, does, does this Katie have, I mean, a point here? There's a major spike in anti-Semitism, not only uh, uh, in Britain, in all over uh, Europe. And anti semitism and France. And not only in France. Not only in France. Yeah. I, I said all, all, all over Europe, in, in the UK, where Katie's from, it's, it's hit a record a high for the third year in a row. Yeah. So uh, clearly, I mean, I know much less than Katie about the UK, but I know a thing or two about France. Uh, it is true that there is a general atmosphere of concern among a uh, half a million strong Jewish community in France. It is also true that there have been years with a spike number of uh, immigrants to Israel, far more than 8,000. We're actually living a drop in the last few years, and it's, consist it's a consistent drop, mm. which doesn't mean that 18 families didn't get a threat, but 18 families are an anecdote in a half a million strong community. So it's worrying, it's worrisome, and many French Jews that I know, and mm. I know a lot of them, uh, worry. But if 10 years ago, it was a clear-cut uh, observation to say that the overwhelming majority of anti-Semitic occurrences and incidents come from the Muslim community. This is no longer the case today. There is a rise in uh, old-fashioned, regular, right-wing, Christian, left -wing. Catholic, and, le and, and left-wing, but, but old-fashioned, from old whites, not from, not from really, Muslims, this, and you can see it in the gilets jaunes, you can see it in the gilets jaunes. They blame the gilets jaunes every time because it's a very convenient, if you don't mind, I'm just going to say one thing, if you don't mind, I'm just going to say one thing, if you don't mind, I'm going to say one thing, the gilets jaunes is a very convenient outlet for these types to blame, and when he sits there and says it's an anecdote, 18 families, it's an anecdote, I tell you, you try being being that mum that received that letter when you've got children in your home. It's not an anecdote. It, no, I will finish. It's I'm a reality so sure. for these families. <laughs> the I will finish. Is a, is a free speech, <laughs> and uh, I really believe, and I really believe yeah. it is not you try telling them it's an anecdote. It's really not. And there's a reason okay. people, there's Daniel? a reason 8,000 people are leaving for Israel. It's not because they just fancy to move. It's because well, they're frightened of their do, lives. Actually, and I'm happy to say no, that most French Jews... No, you don't French speak Jews. for most of them. No, you don't you, speak for most French Jews. And you do. No, and I'm not trying to say I do. Okay, I, I think finish. I know, uh, no, quite, you don't quite know. A, lot, a large number of no, French Jews who moved to well, Israel. Well, he has been ambassador to France. He knows you know, about I France. He's trying to blame the Gilets jaunes. No, 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 I'm just saying that. saying that it's too simple to say that it's just the Muslims. And if you're it's a Jewish person, I think it's I'm sorry, if you're a Jewish I'm person in Europe, if you're a Jewish person in Europe, you have more historical Katie? bad memories from I mean, the white Europeans that you love so much than from okay, the Muslims. Daniel, Katie, I'm you know? just more honest than he is, and I'm willing to I say want, it is the Muslims you. that's forcing the Jewish people out of Western Muslim, Europe. The Muslim population, friends, and they're, they're, they're forcing also, they're the white population against Muslims as well, as well aren't there? Oh, please, that's such a lame argument. Just because one person's hated, another's hated, well, that doesn't sure. cancel it's it not out. A, it's argue. No, well, it's not an argument. It's just that it's just people is not an anecdote. Can I just say, you should make up your mind. From the Home Office for that, that studies the hate crimes in 2018 that have to do with religion, 52% of hate crimes were directed at Muslims, which are about, uh, consists about 5% of the population, and 12% uh, at Jews, which is also a horrifying uh, Tell number. Tell me, answer me it this, seems, then. It seems, answer no, me I, this. I want to ask you, I'll let you ask the question. answer me this. Why are people, why are people being warned not to wear their kippah in Public. I'm not saying Answer there's not anti-Semitism. I'm not Answer saying me that. Why is that happening? I'm, in Germany because there's right anti-Semitism. 
Right, because there's anti-Semitism, and that is, there is also, coming is there not from an also, Islamist is there population. Not also, and you don't want to be there, honest about it, and he doesn't want to be not honest also about Muslim, it. It takes me is, to be honest about it. It seems like you're not willing to acknowledge that there is racism against Muslims as well in the UK. Or that France. there is racism against Jews that does not come from Muslims. Okay, I ask you both. Does it counter it? Do you always it, answer does questions with a question? No. Does it it's, negate it? It's just does a no. Does it does not negate no. it? Does it does negate it? Absolutely not. Will you acknowledge it's it? It's just not complete. You know, if you want to talk about anti-Semitism in Europe and why people are leaving, you cannot just talk I about Muslims. I think we Muslims. have to be very cautious. The I last, am trying the to last, be cautious. The last hate attack against the Muslim individual, where she was supposed to have her burqa removed, was actually a completely fabricated story and made up. All right, well, let's so talk we about... To you, have to, you have to be cautious. Let's talk about being cautious, because you've been accused of, of, of fear-mongering and bigotry throughout the years, yes. for example. Maybe yes. you should be a little more cautious with words. For example, in two, April 2015, in a column for the Sun titled Rescue Boats, Ideas yes. Gunships to Stop Migrants, where you wrote, show me pictures of coffins, show me bodies floating in water, and then you wrote, these migrants are like cockroaches. Yes. Not very cautious I don't language. want to be cautious. I'm proud of that column. You're quoting on, it as if your... I'm not proud of it. We should use you're gunboats wait a minute, you're proud to stop of the migrants. migrants cockroaches? It's absolutely a a fact. It's I, absolutely a fact. A fact. That they that are cockroaches? Co migrants are cockroaches. Well, do you need to work co together? Is it, do you need two of you against one of me? Is that no, how it is? No, not at all. Two it's boys? just a question. Do you want how me to, are, are you not letting me answer? Uh, You're no. just ganging up like a weird twosome. Go ahead, answer. Go ahead. The oh. spin room, two against one, doesn't seem very fair to me. If you no. want me to answer the I question, you're going to need to be quiet. I've seen your hand You've managed worse. He's going to need to be quiet. All right, Daniel. I say that we need gunboats to stop the migrant boats because it's very important those migrants don't set sail into the Mediterranean because so many of them die. They will be much safer on land. My cockroach reference was specifically because we're taught that the only animal that could survive a nuclear holocaust is a cockroach. And I was referring to the enduring nature of migrants across the Med. And I don't regret one word of that column. I stand by it. It was a very good column, which you is know, why you're since, quoting it since to Since I me. come from a family of migrants, but uh, for you, this is always the argument yeah. people use. It doesn't impress me at all. But Just I, where you come from. I come I'm, from a family of farmers. I'm not trying farmers. to impress you. I'm trying I to make a I come from a family a of farmers. Does that make me a cow? Probably, yes. Do carry on. <laughs> well, maybe, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> you call me a cow. <laughs> no. You said I shouldn't call people cockroaches, no, and now you're calling no, me you a cow. No, you called yourself a cow. I, I did. Want to, I, I just want to... I didn't hear him call you a cow. He did. He called me a cow. No, I did not. I did not. She did. He just tried to show off about coming from an immigrant family. I'm not I want to move on to our region, if we can. Um, you've called Israel your, your natural home. I love it. Tell me why. I'm not Jewish, I know, and I'm an outsider, I know, and I don't know all the things about Israel that you clearly do. Mm. I love this place. Why? I love what you stand for, you're about strong borders. Not only do you build a wall above the ground, I've been to visit it with the guy that designed it, you build it below the ground. You have a national service, people go into the army, they belong to something, you have a purpose here. What I don't have in the UK is a unifying purpose, which is why we're falling apart all over the place. And you know the thing that I love about the people I actually bother to get out of a studio for an interview for my documentary Homelands that really matters mm -hmm. is they say that when they came home for the first time back to Israel from France from Paris they were in tears at the airport because you met them with their paperwork and for the first time in their life they felt like they were home. And when I hear people speak like that, I can tell you, it, it sets me off any you're, time. Katie, That's you're, my heart. You're, you're a big... Finally, we agree on something. I mean, I feel exactly <laughs> I the same. I was born here. I served and this... this your by the way, you were, I served this uh, yeah. nation for yes. 30 years as a diplomat proudly, mm -hmm. and I plan to die here. Mm -hmm. And yes. I agree that this is a place with a purpose. Yes. Of course, there are certain reasons why we have to build, uh, build walls on borders that we don't yet have. We don't have recognized borders. But this borders. is a home. Yeah, absolutely. Such a home. But I mean, it's a complicated place and it's a complicated environment. And one yeah. of the reasons why we have such a sense of purpose is maybe because we are under a permanent uh, situation of threat, which the United Kingdom Katie, is not exactly. You're, 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 uh, big, you're, big, Donald, right you're you. a big Donald Trump fan. Love Donald why, why Trump. Why do you think he's so popular in Israel, by the way? Not that popular in Britain, for, any, for anywhere else in the world, for example. Israel is, probably, Israel is probably one of the only places in the world okay. where Trump is so popular. Number one, British people love Donald Trump. Some little small place called London, run by a pathetic a... Muslim mayor <laughs> called Sadiq Khan, okay. who's this high. He's one of your favourites. Oh, I really add. love him, really love him. <laughs> yeah. They don't love Trump. We love Trump. I'm speaking at his birthday party mm -hmm. in the Trump International, and what we identify with, it's what Israelis identify with, it's what I 
identify with is a strong leadership that allows you to put your own people first. And apparently, and I don't know apparently why people some people are Apparently, some people, some people aren't identifying with everything that you say because you, you told me today that yes. you were supposed to speak in a town called Ranana uh, yes. and they canceled the event. Absolutely. Homeland was supposed to do its premiere in Ranana. Um, I'm very disappointed with Channel 13 and a gentleman called, could you Nadavia. help me? Nadavia. That um, <laughs> fool who I'm going to go and visit Nadavia in person. The fool. Uh, the fool. Far I'm, from I'm a, a fool. No, he's a fool. Oh, he speaks I mean, yeah, no, a free speech. No, no, do not defend the man. He's, he's probably a defend the man if is I want not, to. Does he not you say, will not tell me if I not, can defend I will him tell or not. You, no. I will, you call me a cow. I can tell you what I want. He did not call you a cow. I did not. Even if you ask me 15 times, I did not. Does he support free speech, this idiot man, not you, the fool? No, you have to ask him. Okay, he says he supports free speech. What did he do to my event? He tried to get it closed down. And what are we doing in return? We're having it in the heart of Jerusalem, and it'll be twice as big as it was but before. Back to Trump. Why do you think Trump is so popular here in Israel? Would you agree with what? Uh, well, he first of all, Trump did, uh, Trump did a lot of uh, right. things that are considered very pro-Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have different views about how pro-Israel it actually is, mm -hmm. but he, in, in, the, in the mind of most Israelis, it is considered as very pro-Israel. And I think there is in Israel too, as in a number of countries now, a certain um, sympathy for uh, strong talking, mm. uh, and I'm saying strong talking, not strong leaders, because right. I'm not sure how strong he really is, but, you know, <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of my own prime minister, mm -hmm. of who I'm not particularly <gasps> fond. You might have Bibi. found out. Bibi. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you love him. I love Bibi. I, He's yeah, going to be my fourth husband, so. and yeah. he doesn't oh, know he it yet. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> He's going to find out. out. I, I, you'd rather not say it while you're around Sarah no, because she's dangerous. I love Bibi. He's Let me just ask you before we don't have a minute left, Katie. You know the two-state solution seems to be dead or dying slowly, which many people believe leaves us with this one-state outcome, which could mean an apartheid state. If it's mm. not an equal vote for everyone, it can't be a okay. two-state solution. There will never. So it'll be a one-state solution. Be a one -state solution. There will never ever be a two-state solution. So what? what how is will it be a one-state? How will it be a one-state? Israel state? will become the super force here. You will have to have a one-state solution. How is that not apartheid? And there will else? not be. There will not be peace in. Israel so wait, until well, you well, remove the people who don't well, belong be allowed to but vote. But they are indigenous you, people. It's not, you, they're not migrants you will, like you will in have Europe. to have a one-state solution and until you reconcile yourself. It's a 50-50 no, you no, relation division. So it'll be one state where only half of the people can vote? It'll be a one-state solution. That's a democracy? You will have to remove certain individuals. You will just take more land. You mean 50% of the population will have to go? Eventually. Yes, they will have to go. Although they are indigenous people. Well, if some of their population still stab you with knives, then I would say the rest have to go. No, then you have that's to take the, the people who stab knives and put them that's in prison. All the time. It's not no, the no, fault no, of everybody no, else. We, no, that's no, all the time we have. I want to say thank you to Daniel Shek and thank you very much to Katie Hopkins. Absolutely thank you much for coming pleasure. on the show. Thank that's you. it. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for taking a ride with us on The Spin Room. Hope you hop on again every Monday and Thursday, 4 p.m. New York, 11 p.m. in Tel Aviv. In the meantime, hang in there.